Good morning. Welcome to this week's segment of the Jesus Movement Moment here at BFCOG. I just thank you uh, for tuning in. I ask that you share this. Uh, Pastor Brown is not uh, here today, so he asked me to step in. He said, hey, we need somebody that's better looking and uh, better on camera and just more knowledgeable. So I said, well, obviously that's me. I'll step in and do that for him. Um, and he uh, will appreciate that comment since he was rooting against my team last night. But <clears throat> I just wanted to come on here and share a little bit about how Jesus is moving in our youth. I'm standing here by the bus. Um, you guys support this ministry so much. I'm going to encourage you to keep doing that. Sign up to bring meals. Uh, last week, I think we had 40-some kids. The week before, 45. Um, and they keep showing up, and they keep getting on this bus. I drive this bus every Wednesday down uh, around town, a couple places, stop and pick them up, and just more and more kids are texting and saying, hey, can I get a ride? So this bus is getting a lot of miles in it around town. You'll see it driving around Wednesday nights. And then we take them all home after we feed them give them a little bit of gospel and uh, play some games and we take them all home. So I ask you to keep praying for that ministry, keep supporting that ministry and keep encouraging these kids because they are obviously our future of our church and we need to build them up <clears throat> without them. We're stagnant without our youth. We cease to exist soon enough. So please continue to support that. I want to give you an update on our TCTC trip that we have coming up. We're going to Gatlinburg in January. Thank you. Uh, I cannot say enough. I've talked to so many of my uh, youth pastor friends and people I know just to say how amazing our church has been to sponsor these kids. We're taking 20 people, five chaperones, 15 youth. Uh, there's still a couple sponsorships available if anybody's feeling willing to do that. But you have sponsored almost 10 kids with uh, just an awesome opportunity to get to know Jesus that weekend. I can't say enough about it. Uh, just thank you for stepping up. You're stepping up for this generation, and I can't appreciate that more. That's uh, where my heart is, and you guys know that who know me. Uh, that's just so impactful to say, hey, I know this cost is, is, is significant to you, but we're going to not charge you. Uh, we have somebody that says, you know what, I want this kid to go meet Jesus, have a great weekend, and get to know himself through the eyes of the Father or, or herself. And I just, man, that's just so impactful and so awesome of our church family. So please continue to support us. If you want a sponsor, like I said, we have a few more spots available. Uh, and then I don't have to charge these kids anything to go. And that would just be amazing to them. So thank you for being a blessing, those that, that, that have. And thank you all that are considering. And please, we just pray for us. Pray for these kids. This weekend is going to be huge for them in January. Uh, but it's been huge here on Wednesdays every night. I just want to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing. Um, so I've been teaching this series called What If? Uh, we started with what if, uh, you know, what if the Bible is real? I mean, we might as well start with our playbook. It's what we're supposed to read every day. That's what we're supposed to live our life. So what if it's real? What are the implications of that? So we started talking and the Holy Spirit just kind of took over at youth and said, hey, why don't you challenge these kids? Talk a little bit more about what that means. If it is real, if the book, it really is real, are we living up to it? Are we living to those expectations? Are we expecting life to be handed to us and life to just go smoothly, but we're not following the playbook? That's not how it works. So I just want to say that was two weeks ago, and uh, wow, what a response. The kids, they were silent. It's the most captivated audience I've ever had on a Wednesday night with 40-some kids there. They were silent. They were attentive. Um, and then we had about 10 of them ask for Bibles afterwards. I've been pushing Bibles on them for years saying, hey, please, if you need a Bible, let me give you one. But there's no sense of getting ahead of God until he decides to show up and move in their hearts. And he, he's doing that right now in our youth ministry on Wednesday nights. So I gave out 10 Bibles that night. I had kids stand up and say, hey, I want to pray for somebody. I want to lift somebody up. There's something going on in my life that I just need your help. And kids are coming to me more and more and asking for prayer for things that are going on. And you have no idea what these kids are going through. So much heavy stuff. I just ask, keep being diligent and praying for them. And then last week we talked about what if, what if Jesus really is who he says he is? What if everything in the book that points to Jesus and points to his glory and everything he came and did is legit? What does that mean to us? What does that mean with our relationship? And isn't that a guy, if that's, if that's all true, isn't that a guy you want to get to know? And same response, man, they were quiet, they were attentive, and God is moving through this message. So I just ask that, you know, you, you keep supporting that and understand what that means. It's not just an implication for the youth or for me, it's an implication for you. What if, what if everything in that book is real? What if... Jesus is real. He's the guy that he says he is, the guy that everybody says he is. Do you live your life that way? Do you live your life dedicated to him, to want to serve him, to serve the ideals that he serves, which is loving one another? Remember what he says, God first, others second. It's that easy. And that's the message I've been teaching to the youth on Wednesdays. And again, we had a great response last week. We're going to do it again this week. 
Uh, we're going to talk about what if hell is real. What the implications does that mean? What does that do for your day-to-day -day life and your walk with Jesus? If hell is real, you better watch out and you better wake up because it's coming. Regardless, it's coming, right? So we're going to talk about that. Last week we had more kids. I think we gave out five Bibles last week. So please, uh, we had somebody donate, I think, like 50 Bibles to us a year and a half, two years ago. I'm almost out of Bibles. Kids are taking these Bibles. So please, if you can do that, that's on your heart. Donate some Bibles. Get with me about different ones because there are some ones that they will read. And, and some of them, are just like us, they prefer not to read because they're a little hard to understand. But I just thank you, those that have encouraged and have built us up and have poured into this ministry because it, it's, it started with just an idea. And now it's got legs and it's growing and more kids are coming and they're inviting their friends and they're saying, you know, this is, this is where we want to be. We wish we could do this more nights a week. And uh, I'm going to need more volunteers for that. <laughs> So if you, that's on your heart and that's something that God calls us to do, then we're going to do it. And we're going to expect you to show up. Sunday mornings, and we need volunteers. We have NTP. We have college class. We have uh, elementary age. We have youth. We need more volunteers for that. Step up. Step out. Serve one time a month and see what happens. Because it's not just the kids that are getting something out of this. Talk to anybody that volunteers for youth. You will get the reward. You get to spend that time with them, but they pour just as much into you as you pour into them. So I just encourage you to do that. I thank you for your support as your youth pastor here at this church. Uh, just blown away by the support you've given for the trip we have coming up, by what you do with the meals for the kids. Keep signing up for that. It's awesome that they just get to come in here and they're like, who cooked for us today? Who cooked for us today? What are we eating? They're so excited. You guys have, you know, to you, it's just a meal, but to them, it's everything for the week and they look forward to it. So thank you for that. I just want to encourage you to keep doing that. Sign up, get involved, come find me. Uh, and I, I, we're standing here by this bus. Let me give a shout out to Noah's Ark. They gave us this bus. They saw what was happening with our youth ministry and we were using it and borrowing it. And they said, take it. God has provided through things for us to have new buses. Take this and use it. Use it as God would want you to use. So I just thank them. I thank Noah's Ark for everything they do for our community and for our kids. And obviously, they have a special place in my heart. I work there too. I love it, but I thank them for this. That's why I wanted to do this here. So I encourage you. I ask you to continue to pray for our youth this week. Thank you for your time. Uh, just uh, invest. Invest in our future by investing in our youth. That would be my plea to you. Thank you. Have a great week. In Jesus' name, amen.